nearly one mile underground in Leeds, South Dakota, lies a world-leading science facility that serves as the office of scientists searching for answers to the most fundamental questions about the universe. Last month, photographer Josh Gates and I were given the unique opportunity to travel beneath the surface to bring you an insider's look at areas few people get to see outside the worlds of particle and nuclear physics, biology, geology, and engineering. That's a lot of science that boils down to this. Researchers are working to find how and why we're here and how what they find could change everything. The donation of the former home state gold mine was a tremendous resource. There were 400 miles ranging from the surface down to 8,000 feet below the surface. As we just covered, there are a number of different disciplines or research groups that can take advantage of, of that type of real estate. That real estate makes the Sanford Underground Research Facility ideal for sensitive physics experiments conducted inside what is called a quiet environment away from the high energy cosmic radiation from the sun. Standing on the surface of the earth, holding out your hand, three cosmic rays are going through every second. If you come a mile underground, you leverage the screening power that a mile of rock offers. It knocks that level down by a factor of around 10 million. So compared to three per second on the surface, that translates to one per month underground. And if you're a rare process physics experiment looking for something that no one has ever seen before, you're giving yourself every advantage. That doesn't mean that you'll be successful. Nature, nature may be a bit more devious, but, but it gives you that extra advantage where you don't have to look for that rare process in a, in, when you're screening out of numbers of background events per second. The research taking place here includes the study of particle and nuclear physics, looking into dark matter and neutrino physics. The Lux Zeppelin dark matter experiment is an effort to understand dark matter. Dark energy makes up about 68% of the universe. The remaining 27% is dark matter. We call it dark matter simply because we don't know what it is and we can't see or touch it. There's this very heavy, dark, mysterious stuff that sort of holds together galaxies. Um, and we call it dark matter because we can't see it, but we know it's there because we can see it's um, how it pulls things around through gravity. And we believe it's um, a big, heavy particle called a WIMP or a weakly interacting massive particle. Um, and if it, that is the thing that makes the most sense with the rest of physics, but it's actually, you know, it's, it might not be a WIMP, it's still a big mystery, so that's what we're trying to answer with this experiment. By understanding dark matter, scientists are hoping to be able to answer the big questions, including what is everything made of, where did we come from, and how did the universe begin? So what we do is we put a big, heavy target, so this is liquid set on, uh, so it's, it's very dense, it's heavy, and it also gives out light when particles go into it and, and sort of uh, smash into a xenon atom. So we basically take a big bucket of it as a, as a target for the dark matter particles. We, um, we, we try and detect light using special, very sensitive light detectors, and we wait for a particle to come in, cause a flash of light, and then that's our sort of signal, and that would be our dark matter signal. So that's how we try and measure it. We have, and we have to have it extremely shielded and very, very um, quiet, so that's why it's deep underground, and it's inside this big, you know, double-walled giant cryostat vessel, uh, and it will be th inside a water tank filled with water to also shield it so that from, from other particles that might come in so that we only see the dark matter. Scientists with the Deep Underground Neutrino Experiment, or DUNE, hope to revolutionize our understanding of the role neutral subatomic particles, called neutrinos, play in the creation of the universe. Neutrinos are tiny particles in the electron family. They permeate the universe. They come from stars. They're left over from the Big Bang. We can make them here on Earth in particle accelerators or nuclear reactors. They're abundant, extremely abundant, second only in abundance to the light particles in the universe, the photon, and they're everywhere. In the early universe, there was a big bath of energy, and from energy you can create a matter-antimatter pair. They're basically the same thing, but they have all the opposite properties. So where an electron has a minus one charge, an anti-electron has a plus one charge. And in the laboratory, we can take energy and create matter-antimatter pairs. And then they annihilate again back into energy, so it's a very symmetric process. If that's what happened in the early universe, then we wouldn't exist, because we're made of this excess of matter. Us, the stars, planets, everything that we can see that's made of matter. Using the long baseline neutrino facility, researchers will shoot a beam of neutrinos from the Fermi Lab in Batavia, Illinois, 800 miles through the Earth to detectors deep underground at the Sanford Underground Research Facility in Leed. 
The 800 mile distance will allow the neutrinos time to evolve and oscillate. Here, Dune is four massive liquid argon time projection chamber detectors. It's a precision, massive cryogenic detector. When I say massive, it's made up of four modules. Each module is 15 meters by 15 meters by 60 meters long, which is like the size of an Olympic swimming pool, but four times as deep. And they're filled with cryogenic liquid argon and um, ultra low noise sensing devices to be able to see uh, when the neutrino hits the argon and interacts in the detector. The Myrana Demonstrator Research, which is funded by the U.S. Department of Energy Office of Science and the U.S. National Science Foundation, is looking for a rare form of matter called neutrinoless double beta decay. If scientists find it, it could tell us why matter exists. It helps on a bigger picture understand why is there matter in the universe and less antimatter. Because at the moment of the Big Bang, you should have had equal parts. And if that's the case, they immediately annihilate each other and you should just have this afterglow of energy. But we have matter in the universe and we don't quite understand why. And so hopefully unlocking the key to understanding the neutrino will help explain that. The Myrana project is located inside of what's referred to as a clean room to make sure scientists are not bringing in any radioactivity, such as dust or debris, that could be picked up and interfere with their findings. It's housed within a well-shielded, quiet environment for the detectors. Just to give you an idea, you see this big silver cube that doesn't look like much, but it's almost like this extremely large onion that's shielding these detectors. And so just to imagine, if we looked on the in other side of this silver cube, we would see a foot of polyplastic. Then on the inside of that, we have scintillating panels, plastic panels that would light up if something passes through. Then we have lead bricks. So each lead brick weighs 28 pounds, and we have 6,000 of those. So that gives almost a three and a half foot shielding of lead to enclose the inner part, which is about four inches of ultra pure copper, and then copper that is so clean that you can almost not measure any of the contamination. In fact, it's at the atom level. And that copper then encircles these detectors. And that's just the tip of the science taking place inside the Sanford Underground Research Facility as researchers go deep below our feet to find out what could lie far above our heads. I think understanding the, the multidisciplinary nature is important, uh, but also the, the potential for expansion. We have, as I mentioned, 400 miles of tunnels. We have different elevations uh, throughout the facility. There are groups that can take advantage of those other areas. Uh, one of the cool things that I think is uh, not only that can we go down to 8,000 feet below, below the surface, but there are drill holes that go down 11,000 feet below the surface. And so if we're able to ever get down to those lower levels, we can explore the earth uh, even deeper than that. Another major experiment taking place at the Sanford Underground Research Facility is known as CASPER. Its goal is to mimic the nuclear reactions that happen in stars that are a bit older than our sun. If researchers can do that, it could help complete the picture of how the elements in our universe are built. Good that's stuff. heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned earlier, that's only some of the research being conducted in the fields of particle and nuclear physics, biology, geology, and engineering. Wow. Neutrino Day is Sanford Lab's free science festival, which takes place on Saturday, July 13th at locations throughout the city of Leed. Those include the Sanford Lab, Sanford Lab Homestake Visitor Center, the Leed Deadwood Arts Center, the historic Homestake Opera House, and the All-in-One Event Center. The festival includes hoist room tours, scenic science activities and exhibits, demonstrations, live video chats with scientists, including perennial favorite Science Steve Rakusik. The finale brings science and art together with a live performance of The Legend of the Northern Lights featuring the Black Hills Symphony Orchestra.